Hello and welcome to Backseat Drawing Workshops. I'm Eric. And I'm Josh. Today we're going to be drawing a background and we're going to do it one step at a time starting with a tree. I really like the backgrounds. I, yes, I'm going to kill you, Josh. Okay. So what we're going to do is basically, I, I need to tell you what the size of the canvas is because this is pretty important. So I generally make a canvas size about 16 by 24 inches at 300 dpi, which seems pretty big. It's but pretty excessive. It is, but I tend to go to print, and I find that my brushes actually work really well at this size. So your your brush set that you can find in DeviantArt yeah. is see the link below for this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the link for the brushes will be below. Uh, also, the Photoshop file for this tutorial is also located in the comments below. Sounds cool. Yeah, but you don't have to make it this size. I used to draw it twelve by eighteen inches, three hundred DPI. I just find that the brushes work a little bit better when it's bigger. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to basically uh, create the background color. And I already have a strip of color here that I'm probably going to use throughout this entire, this entire tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to include this layer in the file below so you can go ahead and color select from it as well. And you determined the colors in that layer. Oh, now. well, generally most times I determine these colors based on photos that I've taken or mm -hmm. uh, uh, just older drawings that I have. But this particular one is from the game on drawing that I did. I can also link that one too. So we're basically going to kind of recreate the background that was in uh, game on, which was the toothless and Pikachu drawing. So let's start. First thing I do is create a new layer, which I have here. And I can't see this, so I'm going to move it over. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flood fill the background with the lighter blue color. All right, so nice. we have a nice little atmosphere going. When I do my forest backgrounds, I generally have them bluish because I like the uh, atmosphere being blue when things recede into the atmosphere. You get that blue haze going. Is there an advantage to doing starting with a lighter color versus a darker color? Or it's, does it matter? it's really up to you. If you feel like you like working backwards into the darker color, then start light. If you like going the other way, start dark. Uh, oh. This This is just my preference. The next thing I'm going to do is this brush set, again, available in link below. I'm going to be using this airbrush here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of that. And I'm going to go ahead and like Josh was saying, I'm going to add the darker blue section. So I do want to create a focus area that's kind of in the center of the canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of paint the background top and sides in that darker blue color. All right. So as you can see here, we're already creating in kind of like a staging area in the center where the figure for your drawing might be. All right now on the bottom about uh, about two thirds of the bottom part that's where I think I'm going to be placing the grass so I'm going to go ahead and put the green in there. Now you're using the airbrush uh, as you said but is there any particular reason why? I just want to keep things soft and defocused because I don't want to start adding any details that I need to fudge out later. This is just for developing the the basic palette for the background. So now that that's done I like to work on as few layers as possible, so I'm actually going to go ahead and take these two layers and merge them together. I'm also going to get rid of the background layer because it's kind of pointless to me now. Wait, what? Why? Uh, it's the background though, you're making a background. <laughs> it's because it's locked and I don't have the key. I don't have the key to the background's heart. So we're going to just okay. take this one layer and the only other layer that's open right now is that palette. Okay. So now it's time to basically create our tree. I'm going to make a new layer. In the brush palette, I'm going to be using this one here on the third row, pretty much towards the end. It's this like rectangular brush here. This looks like a brick. It does look like a brick. It's, it's kind of like a brick, actually, because it kind of gives this big texture. So I'll go ahead and just use the, uh, the, the brush itself so you can see what it does if I use light pressure. It kind of gives this uh, speckly pattern. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see it. But that's what we're going to use to make our tree. So on that new layer, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size there. I'm going to take a darker color here from my, my palette. And I'm going to just basically make the basic outline of a tree. Uh, why is it blue, though? Shouldn't it be brown because it's a tree? It's darker green. Oh, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the reason it's closer to the background color is because the atmosphere is actually going to cause things in the background to pick up the, the color of the background. So since I have a bluish background, 
I've decided to make uh, the the things that are going to recede into the background kind of pick up that atmospheric color. Now the the brush texture, you know, you're kind of going darker and more. Um, like I'm not seeing the reason that you're using the brush necessarily. Right, here. right. Because I'm pressing pretty hard. So if I press very lightly, it'll make the texture color. But if I push really okay. hard, then you're going to get the uh, more opaque color. But I am doing this because it tends to make ragged edges. And one of the things that kind of kills the believability or depth in your image is making things with very, very hard, straight on lines. So the reason I'm using this brush is because it does give a little bit of fuzz to the edges. And since the trees are barky and textury anyway, I do want to make sure that I don't have too many straight edges on the sides. Cool. Yeah. So now that we have our basic shape of a tree, I'm going to go ahead and set that guy over there because I want to put another one on the left hand side. So I'll just do that one really quick too. And there's no real method here. A tree is a tree. I mean, it, I like taking them off the canvas so you don't see the tops. Uh, one, because I'm kind of lazy, and two, it's easier to create them quickly this way. And then we'll deal with the canopy and the leaves in a later episode. Ooh. Yeah, let me move this over real quick. Every right. tree is unique, you it, know. It is kind of like a tree snowflake, but made out of tree instead of snow. Very poignant. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do here, when now that we have our basic tree shapes, I'm going to create a new layer. And this layer is going to be a clipping mask. The way you create a clipping mask is by hitting this key here, Option or Alt, and then holding the mouse between the two layers and then clicking it. That creates the clipping mask. The other way you can wow, do this, shortcut. yeah. The other way you can do this is right-clicking the layer and then going to Create Clipping Mask, and it's just going to go ahead and create the clipping mask to the layer that's underneath it. Basically, what this means is, and I'll take a quick brush here. Like I'm drawing in the center of the canvas, but it's not showing up. That's because the clipping mask will only show up in the areas under where the layer is underneath it. So as you can see here, I'm moving that, that blob of green. It's only showing up what this layer is. So that's all that really means. Cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the clipping mask to our advantage. I'm going to take that same brick brush and I'm going to expand the size out a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this lighter blue color, since we have this very dark green, is I'm going to take that brick brush, and like I was using it before, I'm going to very lightly touch the tree in the entire trunk. And now, you may not be able to see it very well zoomed out, but when I zoom in on this, you can see that it's actually creating a bit of bark, a bit of texture. So the next color I'm going to pick is a lighter blue color, this one here. I'm going to basically do it one more time. And this basically accentuates the bark and it kind of gives the tree a little bit of an aspen look. Could you zoom in on that again? Mm -hmm. So here it is with that lighter more, bark texture. More, 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 more. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next thing I'm going to do is because the lighting is coming from sort of the center of the canvas, we do need to make sure that the trees look like they're 3D. So the, the edges of the trees that are facing that lighting those are going to receive that lighter color, and I'm brushing them in now. You're using a very large brush. To, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just, I re, yeah, I reduced it just that. so I can get inside of here like that. There we go. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure that I got like a nice bluish hazy color somewhere right around in here, and then light color, because I want to make sure that the the other side of the tree needs to get some sort of a dressing for the light as well. Because you can imagine that lighting might be coming in from the size here and giving the edge of that tree a little bit of light. We can just assume that the lighting from the sun is bouncing off other elements in that forest and then giving the trees just a bit of life on the, the opposite side of the main light source. Some other things that might be in a forest include like a bear, <laughs> some, some grass, some grass. <laughs> now, I'm pretty satisfied with the tree's look. This is where you can really experiment. I might make one more pass with a lighter brush, a uh, lighter color on the brush, just to make that edge really stand out. And this is where experimentation really is key. But 
looking at the trees now, if I flip off the texture at this point, you can see how much it really has done. In a very little amount of time, very just using one brush essentially, I can put a lot of texture in that tree and create a 3D structure just with lots and lots of textures and moving up in our palette. So now what I'm going to do is I merge the two layers together because I like working on as few layers as possible. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to link those by a clipping mask. And then with this layer, I'm actually going to create, uh, I'm going to change its blend mode. And blend modes are just the different ways that the lighting interacts with the layers underneath. But for this particular one, I'm going to choose overlay. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to take a little bit of this, this lighter blue that I have in the background. And the way I'm selecting this is by hitting Alt or Option on my keyboard. Anytime I'm holding that Alt or Option button down, the quick eyedropper tool comes up. When I let go, it goes back to the last tool that I was using, which was brush, which is a really convenient way to quickly select a color, like I'm doing now, and then move off of it and you're back on your brush. But right now I'm going to pick this lighter color, we are on overlay, and I'm going to just hit the bottoms of these trees just a bit so they pop out. And then I'm going to use this darker color, I'm actually going to step it down just a bit, and I'm going to hit the tops of those trees and put them into a little bit of shade. Because you can come out into the top of the trees here, are probably underneath the canopy and they have a little bit of shadow on them. So let's go ahead and merge those two layers together and that is essentially our tree. Z. Trees. Z. Trees. Ooh. We got tree on the right and we got trees on the left. That's not a lot of trees though. What's, well, what's the deal? You'll have to tune in forest. to the next episode and we'll talk about adding oh. the forest. Stingy. Oh. <laughs> but until then, we'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye. Smell you later. Yeah.